This PC video, well, it started off like a few of my other PC videos, something that looked good and cheap, and was hopefully going to perform great. But unfortunately, things took a bit of a turn for the worst. So, this right here is a PC I picked up of a local listing. Quite a while ago, actually. Apparently a PC that was used for a bit and then stored away in a barn. I know, how very strange, a barn find computer, probably not as exciting as a car or anything like that, but still just as dirty because it's been left in a barn. In fact, let's talk about the condition of this computer, as it really is abysmal. The case itself is one I've used before, or at least something similar to this. I used it years ago with that old £112 gaming PC, which is still actually in use somewhere in the world. Probably. I know that I don't have it anymore. This one, however, is missing two of the bottom feet, meaning it's pretty much always leaning at an angle. The bottom of the case is littered in cobwebs, dust, grime, and cigarette tar. Lots and lots of it. Which is something I never like dealing with. This thing looks pretty dire, however, specifications-wise, this thing isn't actually too bad. Whether or not it actually still works in this state is something that I can't actually confirm just yet, because it doesn't actually start. It won't even turn on. But more on that later. What's actually inside it? Well, I'll try and get into the full specifications later on when I actually know what's in it. But as it stands, I can see there's an 1156 motherboard, a fairly decent one, paired with a fairly decent little cooler, which hopefully means an i5 or an i7 is on board. There is a fairly beefy Radeon GPU in there with a custom cooler, which leads me to believe this could have been an overclocker's PC, but given the fairly low wattage power supply, and although a decent board, it is still mediocre with its cooling, I think we can throw out those ideas completely and get this thing stripped down to find out what's actually going on. Now, there's no point trying to do anything at all with these parts before we've actually established that they work. Most of them look to be pretty decent condition-wise, albeit the exception of being dirty and the power supply being a tad rusty on the back, and slightly underpowered compared to the parts it's meant to be powering, but still, it's at least a reputable brand, so it should be okay. And really, we just need to make sure it can power on the motherboard, which also needs testing, as that's sort of the main part of the computer at this stage. At first, things did seem pretty dire. The fans sped up, there was a couple of beeps, and there was no signs of life on screen. However, that turned out to be a faulty RAM stick with bad contacts. It turned out there seemed to be some sort of grimy substance that managed to build up on the inside of the contacts, inside the actual DIMM slot, and on the DIMM itself. Either way, after a quick spray down with the closest substance I had to hand, which was some GT85 mechanical spray stuff, sort of like WD-40. I have no idea why I had it on hand. I'd probably been fixing something. And a quick scrub down, that seemed to resolve all of those issues. With the board now choosing to boot up every time it was used, confirming that we actually had a decent CPU installed. A Core i5-760. That was decent a few years ago, maybe not so much nowadays, but still. We had that, with 8GB of now working RAM, so what's the situation with the rest of the other parts? Well, the graphics card turned out to be a HD 7870 with a rather overkill cooler slapped on top. A selection of hard drives was included, most of which we don't actually need because I don't know why you need that much random storage. A 60GB SSD was included, which was a nice bonus, and those were the most notable of parts, other than maybe a DVD drive and a completely destroyed case. But why don't we get this cleaned up, refurbished, and all thrown back together so it at least resembles a computer, and then maybe we'll have actually got our money's worth.
So with this all complete the specs aren't actually too bad. A Core i5-760, 8GB of RAM, a 60GB boot drive and an old 500GB hard drive for the rest of the storage. Not a bad find for £30 which is what this actually ended up costing me. That and a little bit of money on diesel to actually go and pick it up. But it was around here that everything starts to unfold. Hence why this video has taken so long to actually get out to you guys. To cut short the weeks of frustration this PC has caused me and condense it down to a few short moments, the graphics card would not work at all in this PC. I say this PC because I even used it in another PC where it is still now working absolutely fine. After that I ended up going through my big box of mostly old and completely worthless graphics cards until I found one graphics card that did actually work in this PC. The graphics card in question is the legendary and also fairly worthless HD 4670 Passive Cooled Sapphire card. I have no idea how long I've owned this or why I actually own this but it has finally found itself a purpose in form of being the only semi competent graphics card that this PC wants to work with. I tested quite the chunk of graphics cards from my own AMD Fury all the way down to the GT610 and this was the only GPU to work properly in this system. I have absolutely no clue why but sometimes with old neglected computers things don't make any sense anymore they do their own thing. So with this all up and working I wasn't going to argue with it trust me it had been weeks at this point and I'd lost a lot of motivation on this PC and this video out of the sheer mental distress of a why nothing seemed to work and it didn't make any bloody sense. But anyway on with the actual video. With everything booted up and working you'd think finally I'd come to the end of all of my issues but for some unknown reason this PC would only boot off a DVD. So cue me searching for a blank DVD to burn the latest version of Windows 10 onto which fortunately did work it just took so long to install it because no USB sticks would seem to be recognized by the PC as a bootable item. Before anyone suggests I had already tried updating the BIOS, I'd already checked over a lot of things, I tried all the USB ports, sometimes PCs are just plain weird. But anyway once we got everything installed it looked like everything was working. It just involved finding a weird hardware configuration that makes absolutely no sense in the real world to actually get it to work. Before we get into these oh so great gaming benchmarks I will touch on the general usability of this system and there is very little else I can say other than it worked perfectly fine. That little i5 still holds up perfectly well, I mean even a Core 2 Duo can do basic web browsing stuff still and the HD4670 surprised me. It can provide more than enough acceleration for even the heaviest of web pages and Google searches. I had begun to despise this PC so much so that I didn't even treat it to an install of Firefox or Chrome or uBlock Origin or H264 or Fi I just left it instead with the new Edge browser which seemed to be decent enough and pretty quick on the computer. Still there is only so many ways I can say that this huge hunk of junk can browse the internet perfectly fine without it getting too boring. So let's get on with some real gaming benchmarks. Now another quirk with this PC is although I actually have a semi decent capture card now it won't actually display any signal to it. This PC is messed up on levels I have no idea where they came from. So you'll have to deal with the quality of captures I've managed to get a hold of. I've tried to target a solid and smooth 60 FPS in all titles given our lack of any real graphical gaming grunt. As you probably already noticed with Oblivion this was no issue whatsoever as the game pretty much always held a close to 60 FPS frame rate with only some odd Bethesda quirks causing momentary drops away from this. So Bethesda's Oblivion that runs well. With Fable The Lost Chapters an older but well optimized title the PC had no trouble maintaining a solid 100 plus FPS with a 1080p resolution and the use of the high settings. Given the graphics card we're using that's probably what this PC will see itself doing a lot of the time and it's already going off somewhere now it's actually confirmed working. But anyway how does it cope with some newer games? Newer games like Civ 5 will work provided you drop the settings and resolution down a tad. The CPU didn't struggle at all even into the mid to late game however graphically it could struggle with rendering certain areas as the game could progress. 
However, as long as you don't mind a slightly choppier frame rate, the game was fine in the late game, and, you know, showed that these new titles can be more than playable, and the GPU didn't make any noise at all during this test. I wonder why. That's definitely a positive. Sky are improving to kick it up a notch as something more demanding, with similar settings to the Xbox 360 selected. It wasn't too hard to see the computer achieve about twice the frame rate, with combat and heavy scenes causing the FPS to drop closer to the 40 FPS range. Still an admirable showing from the now frankly cursed computer though. Warband hardly dropped any frames at all. Not that anyone would really expect it to anyway. Uncapping the frame rate would lead to strange fluctuations, probably because the 4670 is just not able to keep a stable frame rate. It's not a very powerful card. So I opted to keep it capped at 60 FPS, and it stayed pretty much exactly on this figure. This PC is spending most of its time now hooked up to a 720p TV display, so I can confirm that it'll be doing that absolutely fine. Finally, the big question remains. Can this PC from hell actually run Crisis? Well, I can confirm that with a HD resolution and a medium preset used with no anti-aliasing, we saw a pretty cinematic 30fps experience. Something that should be a real GPU melter, which didn't really seem to be the case here because of the amount of passive power that this absolute mess of a system has. I, I can't get over that I'm having to use this 4670 that I've had in this box for about three or four years now, but yes, it can indeed run Crisis. Synthetically, the PC did seem to do alright. It did deem that the processor was apparently woefully inadequate compared to this graphics card. However, I can assure you that as beastly as the 4670 seems, this first Gen i5 can do so much more. But all in all, this PC can actually deal with the older synthetics pretty okay, which is pretty decent considering that I originally started this off with the mobile style benchmarks, the things you're meant to run on your mobile phone. By this stage now though, we'd already established the PC was doing alright, causing far too much stress for the combination of parts originally of the Windows install, and the only other issue I ran into was needing to run IP config and a quick refresh on that to sort out an internet issue that kept popping up. Media-wise, even YouTube decoding on the PC didn't need any add-ons, most because I couldn't be asked to install them, but all the way up to 1080p worked fine. So we have a working computer. It just took weeks of troubleshooting to get it to this stage. And I'm pretty sure you're all glad that I've cut out about 47 gigabytes of troubleshooting footage. There was a lot of it. So, in conclusion, this video took far, 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 far too long to make. A lot of issues that I've tried to condense down to a relatively small moment near the beginning of the video ended up being 51.8 gigabytes of footage, which is probably because I've got a new camera that seems to record 1080p at larger file sizes, but that's still a lot of footage, which mostly consists of some of the most boring and confusing troubleshooting you'll ever see. It's just me sticking in lots of different graphics cards after I got one to post with the system and then I thought I'll try this one. I even tried building an old graphics card out of a HD 3870 I'd found, which seemed to work at first but decided it didn't want to work until eventually we end up with this system we've got today. Which goes to show you, not every PC that seems to be a bargain is always what it seems. Still, we've all seen something like this before, I'm sure, and let's hope that I don't have to deal with anything like this anytime soon. So I hope you've all enjoyed this video, even if it did take a long time to get it finished, and it's good to be back and making content. Good night. So if you enjoyed watching me endure the pain to get this PC back up and running, please do like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys over in the next one.